Well, hey everyone, I've, uh, I've just grabbed this present from underneath the tree. It's from a really good friend of mine. Rumor has it, it might be a Nintendo Switch or, or a PlayStation. I've been dropping quite a few hints, so um, we'll, see what, we'll see what we get. But, you know, it's beautifully wrapped. We've got some lovely wrapping paper, nice ribbon going on there. There's a, there's a tag here, to my bestest BFF, have a brilliant Christmas. Well, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Should we, should we open it up? Will you, will you help me? If you grab, grab this ribbon here, just reach your hand out, grab the ribbon. There we are, well done, that's fantastic. There we are, thank you for your help. Let's see what we've got, shall we? Pretty excited. Hmm. Well, it's not a Nintendo Switch, it's not a PlayStation, it's a bag of sprouts. These will come in handy a bit later, but it's not what I was expecting. Well, I'd like to wish you a really very, very happy Christmas. We're, uh, we're so disappointed not to be with you this morning. We, uh, we're having a COVID Christmas this year. Unfortunately, Hannah has tested positive for, for COVID. A few of the rest of us have got symptoms of this, that and the other flying around. And we, we just thought it would be safest for all involved um, for us to, to say hi and to, to share a message with, with you from the, the safety of um, our own home, but through the, through the wonders of technology. So we're really disappointed to not be with you. Um, and it's, it's not really what we were expecting um, for our, our first Christmas in, in Oswestry. Street. But do you know what? Christmas is, is a time of surprises, isn't it? Christmas is a time of unexpected things, whether it's receiving as a present sprouts instead of a PlayStation or or maybe a, a visit or a card from a long lost friend that finds its way to us at Christmas or maybe being able to fit in that last mince pie when really we had no reasonable right to think that we ever could. But Christmas is a time for surprises, isn't it? And really right from the very first Christmas, the very first Christmas, it was full of unexpected things bursting with unexpected surprises. There's the visit of uh, the angel Gabriel to, to Mary to, send, uh, to share with her the special news. The, um, the, the, the fact that, that Mary becomes pregnant by the Holy Spirit, that's certainly not what Joseph was expecting. There's the census that takes them all to Bethlehem. The, uh, the knock on the door in the middle of the night from a, a bunch of very excited shepherds uh, who, who've come to see the newborn baby. Uh, a, a second knock on the door sometime later from uh, learned uh, wise men from the Far East who, who have travelled afar with their entourage of um, expensive and costly gifts and camels. There's the, the angels and, the, and the, the bright star that that light up the night sky, declaring in all their heavenly extravagance the wonder of the birth of the Saviour, the birth of the new King, the birth of the true King. None of these things were being expected by anybody. And what we find following that, um, Herod's murderous campaign and the, the hurried flight to Egypt of the young family. Jesus, the saviour, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, the new born king. God with us, Emmanuel, growing up as a displaced person, finding safety and refuge in a country far from home. That's not what anybody was expecting. I wonder if you've got any special Christmas traditions. As a, as a young lad, one of our um, uh, favourite Christmas family traditions was always to go pay a visit to, to grandma and granddad. Uh, we'd spend the day with them and after all the, the food had been consumed and the presents had been opened, uh, my granddad would have a rummage through his, his, uh, his games cupboard and, and pull out from there a pack of cards and a jar of, of old copper coins 
and we would sit down to play a, a game of pontoon. Now, now I had no idea um, how to play the game of pontoon. I, the, the rules were just beyond me. Uh, I couldn't get my head around it. It was stuff that I didn't understand, but I would always play on my dad's team. So I'd be on my dad's team, and it's fair to say, I think, as we were playing the game, my dad was doing most of the heavy lifting. Um, but there would come a moment, a, a few times during the game, when, when he'd, my dad would look at me and there'd be a twinkle in his eye and, and he'd say, Chris, I think you can, you can uh, do, the, do the betting on this one. And, uh, and I knew what that meant. I knew that he had a great, a great um, hand of cards. And I knew that we could go big. And so with great excitement, every single time, I would be saying, we're all in on this one. And I would be getting all of those, um, those copper coins and maybe it would be as much as you know, 20, 27p. And I'd be pushing them all to the centre of the table and proudly and enthusiastically deca declaring, we are all in on this one. Um, I did not understand the rules of pontoon at all. I still couldn't explain the game to you. But I, I, I knew that when my dad gave me that look, that he had a good hand and I could trust him. And I knew that under those circumstances, we could go all in and I could push that money into the middle of the table. And we tended to do pretty well. You know, I think when, when we experience in our lives God doing surprising or unexpected things, I think, you know, partly that can be down to God just being wonderfully and brilliantly creative. It's also down to, to the fact that God is just bigger. God is beyond. God is a whole different order of being to us. He's completely other. Another way of putting that would, would be to say God gets everything. God understands everything. And we get some things sometimes. We understand some things sometimes. One of the, um, early, the leaders of the early church and certainly one of the greatest thinkers, greatest minds of ho the whole of Christian history was a guy called the Apostle Paul. And, um, and, and, and he said this about God in his, in his letter to the Romans. He said, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. Or, or put it another way, God is amazing. God does amazing things. And we don't always get it. Now, we've been thinking a bit about Joseph in our reading for today. Joseph was a good man, a faithful man, a righteous man. And, and for him, the news of, of Mary's pregnancy, not, not understanding the, the story behind the story, was for him devastating, heartbreaking news. And, and Joseph is doing his best to find the right way through this in the kindest way. But in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his, what we can only imagine was confusion and turmoil, God speaks and an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream and says, don't be afraid, Joseph, son of David, to take Mary home as your wife, for what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus because he will save people from their sins. It's like God is saying, I'm in this. I'm in the midst of this. I'm doing something huge. I'm doing something amazing. I'm doing something awesome. I'm providing um, a rescue for my people. I'm providing redemption for my people. I'm providing salvation. I'm providing a savior. And this changes everything. And you, Joseph, you and Mary are right there within my plans. And I just, I just wonder how, how Joseph copes with that. I wonder how he manages to try and get his head around that. I know if I'm Joseph, I really struggle to do that. I, I'm not sure that I could make sense of it. I'm not sure how much I could take in. But we do know that Joseph, when he wakes up the next morning, does exactly those things that the angel of the Lord has told him to do. I feel like maybe Joseph comes to this conclusion that I, I, I don't get it all, but God, I trust you. I can't make sense of it all, but I'm going to follow the thing that you've asked me to do. I, I trust you. I believe in you. I believe your word to me. I believe the things that you have said to me. I believe that you're in control of this. I believe that you've got a way through this, that you are working out your perfect ways, your perfect purposes. 
And I'm, I say yes to you, God. I, I, whatever that might mean to me, whatever that might mean for, for what's to come, I say yes to you, God. I am all in. And I'm all in because I trust you. I don't understand it all, but I trust you. And I'm all in. You know, right from the very start, Christmas has always been full of unexpected things. And maybe we're facing some unexpected things this year. Maybe life or, or God has taken us by surprise in some way. Maybe we're struggling to make sense of something and we're, we're desperate that God would speak to us about that just like he spoke to Joseph. Maybe we have a friend who um, is going through a hard time and just needs to be reassured of God's presence with them, of God's love for them, that God can be trusted even in the unknowns and even with the unexpected. God would lead us to to share that conviction that that we that we see Joseph had that we might not understand it all. It might not all make sense to us. It might not all have been what we had been expecting. But we can trust God. We can believe his word to, to us. We can say yes to him. We can follow him. We can be all in. May this Christmas, we know with fresh wonder and joy the amazing thing that God has done in sending his son Jesus to be our saviour. As we trust him, may we know that, that peace that passes all understanding. And as we look ahead to 2023 with God, with all of its unknowns, we can do so with hope that God will continue to work out his ways and his purposes in our lives for the advancement of his kingdom, for the glory of his name. We are so sorry not to be with you this morning, but we do pray for you a joyous, hope-filled, peace-filled, restful and blessed Christmas. Amen.